What's up, guys? Back by uh, no demand at all. It is the Tiddycast. Uh, today, I am joined by... Oh, I'm Liam, by the way. I'm joined by Percy. Hello. Joined by Murdo. I don't want to. Oh. And <laughs> joined by Dean. Hello. And again, we're going to be running around, playing some video games, and talking about some random topics. And I say random, it's kind of pre-planned. So, um, as we kind of like went through in the last episode, we kind of haven't got anything really set for how we're doing these videos exactly. We're kind of just... Doing stuff, um, going up with topics and shit. But anyway, this professionalism. We, yeah, we do have like a general topic this time, um, and we'll maybe carry on doing episodes like that. Next episode could be completely different. Who knows? But today's topics are pre-orders, early access, and kickstarters, which we kind of got into last week because um, we kept going off topic. It was great. So, um, what shall we start with today? Let's start with Murdo's favorite game, uh, Mighty Number no. Five or no, Number Nine, if you uh, actually want to call it by its proper one. Um, God damn it. <laughs> the man makes mistakes. Oh, buddy. So, um, Mighty number nine. Mighty number nine. Yeah, the link is in Skype, as, uh, you know, I've already said. God, professionalism is finest over here. And, um, you know, <laughs> on these things. Look at me. I'm, I'm prepared, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Uh, so, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been pushed back again. Oh, look, shit. Yeah. Uh, what <laughs> a surprise. Did you say look, shit? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's Dean's opinion. Welcome, welcome to the video. Um, let me just bring it up. So, uh, we're looking on a Destructoid article right now. Or I am, anyway. That's the link I put in. Um, well, Mighty Number no. 9 has been delayed again. Deja vu, right? Even though the even though the aforementioned headline stresses again, it would be nearly indistinguishable from the past occurrences. So, apparently, uh, online play is uh, the issue that's happening right now. Right. Um, and it's apparently it's just been disclosed a mere two weeks before it's been released. And I'm pretty sure they planned on doing a demo before the full release anyway. Um, but from what I can tell and what this article's telling me, because, you know, I, I just read everything and take it at face value. Um, apparently, the when the Kickstarter went out, which I wasn't really aware of, I heard of it when it first came out, but um, apparently they, like, massively over-promised on everything. So they kind of... I think what happened was it was a case of they're getting so much money, it was like, put this stretch goal in and this stretch goal in and this stretch goal in, and it just became more and more shit they had to develop. That then they just kind of ran out of time with it, basically. What and, they should have done is um, got to a certain point and said, "Right, that's it. No more. We don't need any more donations. We can only make this much." Well, this is right. that was brought up on oh, which podcast was it? I was listening to the other day. Um, I'll try and credit it later, but basically they were talking about how uh, not No Man's Sky. What's the other one? Star Citizen. They, Star Citizen. Yeah. Um, they've got that much money now, and people, it's weird because people were complaining about the uh, fact there's like no proper release date for this game still. Um, but Star Citizen is enough one of those games that has no promised release date at the moment. No. But it's, nobody really is complaining about that one. And mm. was like, yeah, okay, I that's, think, that's fine. The thing is, like, the more, the, well, I think they stopped doing stretch goals now because they've hit that many stretch goals. They've made nearly a hundred million, haven't they, or like, something off it? I don't know. I mean, you'd be more likely to know Like 80 but... something million last time I checked. But I think, um, that's yeah, the last stretch curious. goal was literally Pets. What I was told. Yeah. It's it's like when you get into that point, it's like, yeah, I think you're kind of out of stretch goals now. And I think what people don't realise is every time these stretch goals get hit, it's more stuff that's going to be developed, which means there's more time people are going to spend on it. And I think that's yeah. what uh, Mighty Number no. Nine massively suffered with. I think that's mm. the uh, main reason there's such a uh, what's the word palaver with it. Let's go with palaver. I like that word. It's great. Well, I, I didn't. I don't really know much about uh, Mighty Number no. Nine, but like, were they releasing it on early access or releasing it as full release? Uh, Good question. I think it was supposed to be uh, full release first. Full release. I think so. Yeah, because yeah, what happened was they hit. They got to their release date and was like, I think it was maybe a week or two before. They're like, oh yeah, the game's not ready, but we'll get a demo ready for you. And it's like, okay, that's kind of something, I guess. And then yeah. uh, they can They said the demo was going to be late. They moved the release date, and now they're nearly at the release date again. I think. I think it's two weeks out from what their estimated release date was at the time of recording this. Um, and then. Yeah, it's a case of they're still not ready, even with a demo, from what I can tell. I think what they should do is not set a release date. See, that's the thing. People always want to Just know what the release date out, is. It'll come out. It'll, it'll, it'll be done when it's done at the end of the day. Yeah, it's like I said, it's what Star Citizen isn't suffering with right now. People aren't really going, oh, when's it out? When's it out? When's it out? It's just a case of, oh, okay, things are happening. We'll, uh, we'll just trust the developers kind of thing. The thing about Star Citizen is you have to have a beastie rig to run it because it's on the um, CryEngine 3. That's not really anything to worry about. It's literally a case of the Kickstarter is the main issue at the moment. And yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It, no one's complaining about Star Citizen. Is one of the points I wanted to get to, and mm. the fact it's got that much money and still being developed and stuff. But at the same time, you're looking at again 
this mighty number nine hole thing, and it's a case of it's still not ready when you know it's supposed to have been ready some point last year. I think it, I don't know what the uh, release date was supposed to be last year actually. Murdo, you got any ideas on that or? So I know you were kind of talking about assassins and uh, I'm not, not assassins. So, um, I, don't, I don't really know about assassins. The other game we're talking about, my number nine or five. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have anything to add, to be honest. Okay, well, yeah, so it was supposed to be released last year, we know that much, and they overpromised, and basically they're kind of like reaping the uh, benefits of overpromising things now. Like a lot of Kickstarters mm. do, to be fair. Yeah, yeah they like... shouldn't, shouldn't overpromise, just say, like, basically, I think a lot of games on Kickstarter think, oh, these things would be cool to do, but they don't in reality think, can we actually do them in with the engine we've got or whatever? Yeah. So, well, um, uh, so like they promise all these cool features and stuff. When it comes down to it, they're like, "Oh no, actually, this will be really hard to implement." No, and the one basically thing they have to say to people, "Oh yeah, we can't put this in because they can't, we can't fucking physically do it." Go on, murder. Yeah, the one thing you have to do, like if you plan a project, you have to, you have to plan what do you want to do and at what time it's possible to do. You have to like uh, follow each step. What do, what do you want to do and in which time you can finish it? Mm -hmm. And especially if you take money for it and like earn money from it, yeah. you have to uh, somehow plan it and make it possible, like in a time frame where it is possible. And if you fuck that up, it's like the basic basics of of the thing wound. Like well, I think what I think they should do with like Kickstarter is have a playable tech demo before the start the Kickstarter. Yeah. Usually, usually you play have so people can get a little bit of a feel. Of That's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah Undertale like, had it because Undertale then they've got something to play. Oh yeah, because yeah, Undertale had that. Undertale was uh, one of those games, wasn't it? I completely forgot that it was yeah. uh, Kickstarter because I can't just join the train quite was... late on that. Undertale is one of the better uh, examples for Kickstarter because that thing worked. See, that kind and... of leads me to um, something else I want to talk to. Talk... So, um, with Darkest Dungeon being released quite recently, which is a, a, yeah. you know a game I really like. Um, it just kind of reminded me that we know loads of early access games, but how many do we know that actually have gone from early access to full release and actually been good games? Because yeah. um, Dark mm. Dungeon is definitely one of them, and you don't really talk about them. To Undertale honest. is if you got a tech demo, I'd Undertale. call that technically early release. Technically, I guess. Yeah, they so that made like, a really good transition. Yeah, that's good. something like that. I made a good. A, te a tech demo. Tech demo is uh, free of charge. Here. Like, yeah, so, so it's just some like early access. Though. Yeah, true. But, mm, I don't know. I can't, I can't really think, think of, of many games. Yeah, no. exactly. I can think of plenty of games that are still in early access that should have been out of it by now. Well, <laughs> yeah, Daisy's yeah, a, a perfect of example. Uh, Daisy's a perfect example. Uh, H1Z1. H1Z1's H1Z1's H1Z1, yeah. definitely. Well, um, they've concentrated on Battle Royale now, haven't they? Next car game. Rather than that. Oh, next car game, really, yeah. Supposed to be a I, I, I bought it, like, I think one and a half year ago. It feels Jeez. like it. <laughs> and and like they promised to have like an update every month uh but that wasn't happening like they had a hiatus of like three or four months ish jeez like it, it's a good game it works and shit and it, it it's got uh, it went like pretty far to, uh, right now next call it's game. not it's not like they did now it's not like it's not working they did nothing that's that's not the case but uh, it should be f more far uh, farther Far more along far. Than, it, than it is. More far. <laughs> yeah, more far. That more works for <laughs> English. No, that's cool, man. Um, but yeah, next car game that was uh, originally... I forgot if they subtitled it or they kept the name, but it was... Uh, yeah, no, Wreckfest, they, they, they have now Wreckfest, yeah. Yeah. I forget what it was before, but I'm sure I was watching uh, one YouTuber play that. I'm trying to think... It's of, a good game. What's that? That's not a problem. Maybe but been, it's not uh, finished like, yet. Jack's up to car something. But yeah, it's, it's one of those games that's, that's been in early access for so long, you think it should be out by now and still matter, so... Yeah, so powerful. I already um, bought it. I think there's more games than you realise that make out of early access, but like, um, I don't know. I think more attention gets put on games that have been in early access for years. Yeah, there's definitely like a more of prejudice for that. I think Depths, a game that's not early access. I don't uh, think I'm just checking now. It wasn't no. the first game out, I believe, wasn't it? It, yeah, it was early access, but it's a, a full release That's now. That's kind of full release. Every, every, they brought out God knows how many updates after early access for free. So. Yeah. And, but they've got... Um, I'm sure they've got microtransactions now. Yeah, see, that's... Well, not microtransactions, just downloadable content. Well, I was going to yeah, say. Basically skins and stuff. Yeah, to be fair, it says a lot when uh, you're surprised 
that a game is releasing updates for free, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, GTA is a great it, example. Like of it, that. it's fucked. Like. Uh, what, you shouldn't thing? be surprised about a game releasing an update for their game no. for free. You're right. Yeah. The one That's... thing with GTA, like uh, their DLC politic, if we can get off track right now. Uh, uh, no, like they... you know, we're talking about the same thing. They, 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 they like weren't free... making money off shot. Oh, sorry, GTA, sorry, yeah, that's that's the thing. GTA like does the uh, updates for free, but they make the things you can you you can buy that expensive that you have to buy a char card basically see that's so um, that that's a, that's pretty smart i think it's because very, you can earn the money by yourself it's very similar but it's going to take um, a long time yeah it's but you can to... also like just uh, chuck like 10 10 pounds or 10 euros into rockstar and then get it for get it faster well, that's exactly what uh, warframes uh policy is that you know me uh, me dan and dean play um yeah. you can it's GTA is exactly the same. It's a really I love this like model of gaming. To be fair, it's yep. a case of you can just play the game and grind out what you need, and that's perfectly viable. You can do that, but you can also chuck in a bit of money, get it a bit quicker, and that's how they make well, the money. And also, if you get the game for uh, free, again, then that's mm, not really a bad thing. I mean, GTA thing, you don't, I don't have to pay for, but I don't mind to pay money for GTA. I didn't do it yet, but I don't mind to pay for like GTA Online yeah. because the updates are like worth. Uh, their their self are worth like twenty euros, maybe oh, more. Oh, easy. If you yeah, if you spend twenty pounds, twenty euros on shots and stuff, you can yeah. totally justify it because of the uh, DLC that comes out for it. But when yeah. you think about it, if Rockstar or EA, how much money will they have charged per update? Oh, since it came yeah. out? ridiculous. Probably like ten, ten for uh, ten each. Or I think eight, though, if they eight. weren't selling shot cards, they might charge. Oh no, no. definitely. I think they yeah. have to. Sure. Make it, money. It'd be hard for them to implement that so that. People without the update don't get access yeah. to money in the store. Yeah, that's that's like the online, best they solution. Have, they have to like. kind of do it for free, don't well, they? You've got to think about it this way: they're maintaining servers, yeah. and servers cost money. It's very simple. They've got to make their money somehow. And granted, the updates are free, so yeah. you know you can enjoy those. And if you want to just grind it out and spend as much time in the online servers as you need to, then fair play. But if they want to make their money back and maintain it, some people are going to take the fast track route, and yeah, you know that's. I think it's a good price model. I like that. It's plus it's, it, yeah. Pe- people who don't have the time to play, like oh, want to play and enjoy a game, but <laughs> that they the, can't uh, because they can't put the amount of time into it, it takes to make the money to buy all the stuff. See, this is so quite interesting because you swing back to um, World of Warcraft. That, yeah. Remember when uh, you know power leveling services were a thing and people were paying to get the characters power leveled and stuff? Yeah. And everyone was like, oh yeah, but I work this job or I go to school or whatever, and if why can't I just pay to share my account and get my account boosted? Because it's against their EU, EULA, is it? Yeah. It's their terms and conditions. Let's go that way. <laughs> but these days, you know, five years later, when that was a whole thing, it's kind of like... Chuck us 40 quid, we'll do it for you. Yeah, it's the yeah. main thing now. Blizzard is literally <laughs> like, yeah, 40 quid, we'll power level your character for you for free. It's like, well, not free, but you know what I mean. It's like... 40 fucking quid, though. It's a price. For the low, low price of 40 quid, quid for a, you can be that one loan. retard in a raid that doesn't know how to play their class. <laughs> for a small loan of a million memes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's it's an interesting, like, turnaround on that. And it's similar to... Uh, they did a similar thing where it's a case of... Um, they went from being like, oh, no gold selling to... Oh, here's a way to actually buy gold. With, um... Oh, what do they call them? The WoW subscription tokens, tokens yeah. So they, they did a complete turnaround on that, and a lot of other games are doing similar kind of things, so it's quite interesting to see that change. Mm. To be very... fair, it's not like it's a bad idea, though. Oh, I'm not like, saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad at all. It's very like, good and very clever. I'm... There's part of me that's surprised it took them that long to get on board with that. Oh, Blizzard or is slow, slow to, with that stuff. To have, to have some sort of way to... I don't know, like... Come on down. Go on down. Um, <laughs> like, uh, like I'm, I don't know. So, like, with, like, as you say, with the token, that's just a way for people to be able to spend gold for game time or vice versa. Yeah, it's I'm case surprised, you can like, buy those and sell them and essentially like, get that gold back. So they're making money themselves, aren't they? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Spend £18 on it and it's like, oh yeah, we can sell this on our server for X amount, like 50k or whatever it is. Yeah. I think they're more than that these days. Uh, 56k it? was last time I checked, and that was like last month, so. How, how much is, uh, can you. Uh, the WoW time tokens, it, it very much varies per server, uh, but the one we play on is yeah. uh, 56k at the moment. Per token? Yeah. Yep. So you're literally spending £18 to get that much, that much gold. 
is how that 65, works. 65,000? Yeah, 56,000. Nearly 56, you got that. that. So, that's a lot of gold. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I don't know, not so much. I don't think it's that all well, that well, much in Modern Worlds of Draenor, honestly. In D for Dean, it's a lot of money. For me, oh yeah, for, for a lot of players it is, but with the garrison and stuff, you can make a lot of gold very quickly. Oh yeah, but... For I mean, not for, too long for, ago. For newer um, players and stuff, it's very good. Oh like, god, yeah. It's an easy, Actually, like, quick boost, essentially. Yeah. Speaking of gold, though, Ooh. um, I know it's not per, like relevant per se, but Subject I'm gonna change? mention it quickly. No, it's only a two-second thing. Uh, second my thing. mate recently bought a magic rooster for just over a million gold. What? Jesus. Okay, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> today on uh, Dan updates us on his friend's massive god. Is that the same guy who got like Sky Golem for you and stuff? Uh, no, actually. Oh, okay. We, we, we don't even know where he is. He's got, got some rich friends, man. Friends, man. He's got know, stupid right? rich friends. Yeah, anyway, what were we talking about? I forgot. Pre-orders. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about you know business models and stuff and things and stuff. Um. Anyway, talking about things like that and things and stuff and things. Oh god, we're so professional. Nice. Aren't we? Um, yes. thanks guys. I'm glad I got some stuff. I love stuff and things. Me, it's my favorite. Um, let's talk about pre-orders. I don't know where to start with this. Anyway, we got some pre-orders. Any, any particular pre-order? Well, me and Dan were getting like we were talking about this a while back with um, Deus Ex, wasn't it? Mankind divided. Yes. Yeah, they've they've sorted this out now. It's not actually um, still a thing that's happening, but um, yeah, it's it's something that's been like changing a lot in gaming recently and I, I can't remember what game it was i keep doing this where I, I remember something and then forget what the game was but yeah what is this about there was another game that had a, so basically with deus ex uh yeah. it had a thing called augment your pre-order so for the low low cost of a million memes you could pre-order the game and then you could pick like different um bonuses hang on i'm actually going to get the uh, information basically uh there. how it worked is there were five tiers of rewards and on each tier you would pick one or the other so, tier 1, yeah, I'll get you would choose between um, three skin packs or arms loadouts for the game. Yep. Tier 2 would make you choose between a digital art book or soundtrack sampler. Tier 3 just gives you an extra mission in-game, so no choice on that one. Uh, tier 4 makes you choose between a digital comic book and a novella. And tier 5 is just... Uh, a flower early release of the game four days before the official launch. A novella is so a female novel, by the way. So it's yeah. kind of a stretch goal. Uh, okay, so uh, it's, it, the way it, to me, it, that sounds so dodgy. The way if they you, were doing it. Paying, sorry, carry on. The way they were doing it was um, basically each of these were effectively stretch goals. So if X amount of people pre ordered from tier one, then tier two would be available. Uh, then same again for tier three, tier four, tier five. Um, and loads of people were just up in arms about it. I think they actually, they may have probably got some pre-orders, but they didn't get virtually any from what, you know, compared to most things, because people were like, well, why the fuck should we have to choose between these? Why can't we have yeah. them all? If these are all possible things we can get for a pre-order, then why are you gating the content? So, um, quite quickly, it did get um, cancelled. I'll try and find out when it was exactly, but... I think I ridiculous. might know why they did the tier thing, though. Because... Well, I know why they did it. Oh no no, but I don't know, like because the uh, the collector's edition of the game was one hundred and fifty dollars, yeah, which came with all of that. Ah. So I think so. Basically, as it says on this article, you're re you're receiving everything listed above for ninety dollars, one hundred and fifty percent more than the price of the game itself, and all you basically get to show for that is an art book and steel box and a figurine right, and well, the rest of it is basically i mean i don't know about you but i'm quite happy to spend 90 dollars on a nine inch figure of a character no 150 dollars well no i'm saying it's a night it's 90 dollars extra isn't it yeah over the top of the game but yeah you gotta think the... how much the packaging and the, the actual figurines it's not 90 dollars yeah this, no this but this when you thing. think about no but when you think about it, you go to like MTM, whatever you look at the fucking th the figurines on the stands and stuff, how much they cost, you can kind of understand. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna take measure. How tall is nine oh. inches? So I'm gonna penis joke real quick. It's it's an uh, inch above my penis length. Dean, it's not four inches, mate. Um, Eight, mate. But no, uh, where was I gonna go with <laughs> I'm this? Joking. But yeah, pre-orders are weird, very weird. Because let's put it this way: most people don't buy physical stuff anymore, from what I know. Like anybody I know, yeah. anyway. 
Um, even if you're on console these days, you're getting digital stuff. And to have to spend... To, so pre-ordering it itself is absolutely fucking ridiculous because it's not like yeah. they're going to run out of digital copies of something. Yeah, That's exactly. pretty much impossible to do unless you artificially cap it, in which case you're a shitty company. And if you ever do that, we're going to boycott your shit. All four of us. There you go, feel our power. But um, with the... I see, this is the thing with collector's editions because I, um, I always get the ones from World of Warcraft. Well, I used to anyway. You know, I like to get... In, there, there are, like, limited ones of those, and you do get phys- physical stuff with that, and you do spend the extra money on it, but at the same time, you look at it and go, was it worth the extra 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 quid, whatever it was? And what is so the answer? Was, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like looking at it. I mean, I don't... Me, personally, yeah. I don't mind spending that £20 extra to get a physical copy of something to be able to I, look at I it. Like, I like having things on display. Yeah. Um... Also, but uh, can I can I share a story to that? Go on, I like stories. Because I uh, I bought like not I didn't bought it on day one, but I bought like the day one edition of Just Cause Three for like fifty fifty dollar fifty euros. Uh, actually, I got it like for f- uh, thirty three, so it was kind of cheap. And it came with a steel box. So Ooh. steel box is really uh, is really nice. It looks really good. The only problem is I can't store the CDs in it. You can't. There are five CDs of the game, and only like two fit in it. So you literally got a steel book that doesn't even hold the games. Correct. That's shit. That is yeah. retarded. <laughs> wow. I, I, I went like, what's the purpose? Like, I mean, it's it's a really nice, it's a really nice one, but still, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I still have to, I still have to store them, store the game in the in the normal box. <laughs> so <sighs> silly. Gosh, it literally is down. just display at that that stage. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I don't mind. Pe- See, this is the thing. I was like, when I still had a console, I was kind of reluctant to like switch to anything digital wise I, I i didn't come to the like this generation which is like you know one and ps4 and stuff i was still at xbox 360 but i heard about this digital thing and i was like i don't know if i'd actually even want to do that because yeah. i actually like having stuff on display and you and me have talked about this before haven't we dean where yeah we like because obviously we get a lot of our games on steam now because we're primarily pc gamers um mm. it is really cool but at the same time you if you go to your steam library and look at it, it's like a whole list of games, and it's like, hmm, this is cool. I've got all these games, but yeah, there's not really that cool to look at. And it's something I'd love to have, where you literally have a digital library where your interface is a bookcase or a bookshelf or whatever, and you I actually can click. Like the titles would be arranged like they would like DVDs or games and stuff, and you can click on them and pull them out, and you can see all the cover art and stuff. And, and you can put like the the wrong DVDs in the wrong case, and you search for hours. And oh, yeah, you can totally do that. <laughs> I'm sure that could be modern. That'd be cool. Um, I, for all I know, that actually exists. I and if you accidentally click on the disc while you're holding it, it'll snap in half. <laughs> you can scratch the disc and not play it. But um, no, I was thinking about it because it'd be quite a good way for um, like developers, especially indie developers and stuff, to make a bit of extra money. Because obviously, you'd have your standard case, but. You think about it like you would with physical stuff back in the day. Almost would... like e steel books. Yeah, you'd pay the extra five ten pounds for the steel book edition, or just to have like uh, Bioshock was one I know of, uh, Bioshock Infinite, where you could like flip the cover art so it could be different. And I feel like that could be quite cool as either like maybe in-game rewards or maybe you know extra couple of quid just to have a different one. I don't know. I'd like looking at that stuff. I mean, imagine most people yeah. might have a, a different opinion on it, but I think that'd be quite cool to have. And I feel like. We've lost that. We're going to digital now, which is why mm. I look at this as like, uh, to SX, I would have got that digital, but I'd actually consider the collector's edition just to get the steelbook. I'm doing that with Overwatch right now. It's like, I could quite easily just buy this game for whatever it is, get the digital copy, or I could pay that bit extra, get the physical copy, and it could look really cool on display. And you know what I should do with That's what they're copies. playing on these days, I think. With digital copies of games, yeah, even for the consoles. It's um you have a slight bit taken off simply because there's a lot you don't have to pay for the fucking plastic. Yeah, see, this we're getting to one into a different subject now. So because then uh, you it's it's more environmentally friendly then, isn't it? It's it's what it's why people use a lot of things like um CD keys and stuff. It's yeah. they don't. I don't understand why games games that are priced as they are right now. I actually don't have a problem with like sixty. Oh, I've got to go for fucking American sixty dollars for a game. That makes sense to me simply because that price hasn't changed for years. No, yeah. Like, you could go back to the Sega Mega Drive and stuff, and it's like, oh, a new game's like $50, $60. Uh, 
That yeah. makes sense. But even now, that is still true. And arguably, you can say, well, technically you're spending, again, going for the Battlefront analogy, you're spending $110 on a game because you've got to get the season pass to get a complete game yeah. out of it. Yeah, that's, what's, that that's, where, that's what's, where it's gone But it's, it's dodgy. Same, I forgot where I was going with this. Because Jeez, mo- a lot of games have got less in them than they used to, I feel. But no, it's... I get, I, oh, the subject we're talking about, right, let's get back onto that. Um... What we were talking about is the fact that to get it on digital is the same price most of the time as physical. And that's the weird thing. I don't. This is why I do like PC gaming. It's like a case of, let's go back to UK money, because this isn't going to get confusing for anybody. Um, for us, a new Xbox One game, a new PS4 game, just base price is about £40. You can get that game on Steam generally, and other places even cheaper. You can get that for like £35, £30. So straight away, yeah. you're already saving money on that. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense because it's a digital thing and nobody's had to pay any money to get that like distributed or anything. It's such a case of it gets to your computer and you install it and it's all good, it's all grand, it's all hunky-dory. And you can't do that with physical games. No. It's Physical games are still like... This, where am I going with this? Digital <laughs> games on consoles are still exactly the same. And it doesn't make any sense to me at all. And I think I just rambled and got rid of the, my original point. But yeah, to be honest, I don't understand, I don't understand where you're going with this. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, it's a very it's a very weird thing. But basically, pre-ordering sucks. Don't do it. But that's yeah. the, that's the thing because you give oh, them money for a game that isn't even released. I remember. Uh, yeah, but the poor right, Dean, you can talk no, about that, what, yeah. What <laughs> yeah, think, yeah. Well, there's certain exceptions. I have certain. The, exceptions. Well, uh, we'll go to that in a thing, minute. The one thing, like with pre-ordering. Is uh, yeah, you give them like money for a thing that isn't finished yet, but the problem is like uh, when you produce something like whatever it is, it it takes money to to afford it, and like little uh, like smaller studios like the there are big publisher behind it usually. Yep. And but but usually it's like pretty sto- small studios, and they have to uh, like pay for the for the for whatever they have to pay because it takes like a few months, maybe a year. To fucking make a game. Uh, That's why we don't I, I don't. I don't really. I don't pre-order usually. I remember the old I, school. Pre- oh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, but like it's not a thing. I would like say it's bad because okay. you have to pay for the for the for the things I'll somehow. Put this into perspective for you then for how long it takes to make a game. Uh, Division. That's coming out this year. That's a game. Oh I'm my god. Potentially looking at maybe. Um, but that was first uh, released. The trailer was first released back in E3 2013. So three say yeah. they had even a tech demo at that stage. You're looking at three years to make a game there. And yeah. that's not unusual at all. That's like of course it's standard. Not. You've got to think about the amount of people they've got working on these games though. The amount of money they're putting in. No, you think, think it you think it'd be they'd be able to make a game a lot quicker. Nah, not necessarily. It honestly depends on the assets and stuff that's going into the game. There's a lot at play there. It's not just a case of, oh, mm. we've got all these people, we should be able to make it quickly. It's a case of, because no, you're talking, the possible situation there is too many cooks. Too, too many cooks. Many cooks. Um, you got too many people working on a game. Yeah, and it, it can actually slow down the game at that stage. Yeah. It's why, um, I think it's part of the reason why Call of Duty is like, spaced out between three developers. I think one... If you had like one big team working on that constantly, rather than the free, yeah. you'd actually probably get worse games than you get now. Not saying yeah. Call of Duty games are bad. I actually you can't that. really get any worse. And I don't think uh, Call of Duty. I'd they have like they have like fine. three studios who do like every they like like one one uh, yeah. You know, you, you know what yeah. I mean. But then if you're talking about um, one developers for game, one like... series of game, um, a good example or a bad example of that I suppose is Ubisoft. Because uh, they've got people working on... They've got at least two or three different teams working on Assassin's Creed. I forget how many it is. Yeah. But it isn't just like one team that's constantly working on that. It's... Mm. Yeah, it's more than one. So... I know it's a case of... You can't really just say... I forget where we're going with this. Um, games should just be able to be like made really quickly and they should be fine and stuff. No, I don't mean... I'm, I don't know. Go on. Use your words. Use your big boy words. Just the more with the money they have, usually money makes things happen a lot faster. Mm, maybe. That's what I'm saying. But the thing is, they can spend years making a game. Look like look at any Alien Colonial Marines. How long they um, spend making that game? 
it looked amazing when they first unveiled it, and the game was absolute dog shit. Oh yeah, apparently it was so overhyped, and it was like it was, nothing it was, like it was originally said it was going to be. Yeah, uh, I was watching a stream the other night. Um, uh, the boss battle at the end is so anticlimactic. Um, it's, it's literally just it's like on the Alien vs Predator 2010 version. Yeah. The, um, you have to kill an alien queen on that, and all you do is I. Uh, Hit these buttons, kill a few aliens, hit this other button, and shoot these barrels, and there you go. That's the boss fight, apparently. Wow, that's that's fun. It's boring, very boring. Right, let's get back to the subject. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> we can do this every video. Um, yeah, so I don't understand why things are the way they are in in world <laughs> and stuff and things ah. and stuff. Uh, People um, think things are like they are. Anyway, yeah, I just why want to say something. Go on, go on, say things. Uh. So you think I miss the good old school pre-orders oh back God. when I was about 13. There's no before good you had all this early access crap. It's about a year ago. Dude, there's no good pre-orders. <laughs> back in my day. There's no pre-orders. No, there. you used to go you used to go into game. Oh yeah, pre-order game, put a fiver on it. Oh, you're talking about like, literally going into a bricks and mortar store and physically yeah. putting the money down. Old school. That's because they not don't actually re- the company doesn't actually receive any money on it until you pay for the actual get the full game, do you? See, I don't know if they do anyway. Nobody's like ordering directly from EA. When they buy a game, they're going to game first, and mm. the money doesn't go out because you literally pre-order a game. It costs you nothing. You don't even put a deposit down, and then no. the money gets taken out when it gets delivered. So nobody's getting money before they should anyway. Yeah, I know, but like that's but now you no, but now with uh, pre pre-order and how it is now, if you pre-order a game, they get the money before it's the game's released, don't they? When does who does the companies? No, they don't. Do they not? No, I literally it's... just said why they don't. You pay for you pay for pre-order though. You pay like forty odd quid. Don't Do you? It? Yeah, you pay when you pre-order on Steam. You're paying for the why, price of the why game, you, aren't you? Why are you pre-ordering a PC game? Why well, I was on about old school ordering because they wouldn't receive any money until, like, say, like you paid for the full Wait. game because you, you usually a deposit in like game or something. You put that on like a fiver. You're comparing deposit. two different things. Yes, well, I'm comparing back to how it was then. It might have been it's like that on Steam. I wasn't yet. a PC gamer. Yeah, people can still do that. Yeah, it's I know. Still, it's still a thing. I know, but I'm on about on Steam. I'm trying to... But Steam was never a brick and mortar store. For fuck's sake. You're not the... getting it, so I'll just drop it. But you're not buying... You're not, you're, not, you're not getting it, so... You're not buying physical copies. That's the difference. Yeah, I know. But... <sighs> you were never buying physical copies from Steam. Yeah, but it's like with... On consoles now, with you being able to pre-order a game digitally, you pay forty quid up front before the game's even out. Whereas back in the day, when you had the the uh, even the down to the original Xbox, you pre-order a game or whatever. You know what you're doing right now. What you're highlighting exactly why digital pre-ordering is fucking stupid. You're yeah, li- that's, we, what that's I, the that's point we're to getting to. That's the point I was trying to make. I was going a long way about it, but that's the point I was trying to make. <laughs> God, like, digital pre-ordering, they've got the money. For, but I suppose there's no other way for PC gaming, is there? Because uh, yeah, just don't it's, pre-order. It's all digital now, isn't it? Yeah, just don't pre-order. Yeah, wait till the game comes out. That's kind of what we'd already agreed on. No, but I was trying to I highlight don't. how stupid <laughs> digital pre-ordering is. Yes, Dean, it's very Why stupid. Why you shouldn't. Yeah, every listen to Dean. Literally, that was literally what I was just trying you to You were so I fucking... Went, you went, I went a, such a long way about what, it. Though. You went fucking... You didn't just like go the detour way to that you went like out of the country you went to china you had a quick word with them you uh had a bit of a dance with uh, a country that's famous for dancing then you got to the point germany germany <laughs> yeah totally. that's exactly you know what, what, you, know what you know you're like that dude that um that bought the fucking flight to berlin or whatever because it was cheaper to get a flight to berlin and then to like Heathrow than it was to get a train Directly from wherever he was working back yeah. to Essex. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> that's right. you. Right Dean, I'm proud of you for getting to the point eventually, but yeah. that was no. Ridiculous. It's just like you weren't you weren't picking up what I was going on about until you said, "Oh, I feel like you're highlighting." But we were such. already talking about how bad it was. Yeah, I know, but I was comparing back like back in the day, back in the before, before then digital pre-orders on consoles. Yeah, no, I get you. Back in the day when there wasn't well, when, digital pre-ordering. Old school pre-ordering. Old school. But that's the thing. 
I don't know how many people actually ever did that either, because I, when I'm pre-ordering was a thing, things. when pre-ordering was a thing, I'm pretty sure, you know, it was already available to do that, not so much digitally, but you'd be ordering a physical copy digitally, and that was the point I was getting to. Most people weren't going to a brick and mortar store, putting a fiver down, saying, oh, I'd like I, this copy of the game, please. <laughs> well, you needed social interaction with somebody. Um, Fuck you. <laughs> Wow, that, most that's people, really cruel. Oh, I didn't love you really. Um, yeah. Most people, like f- physical stuff, it, like physical copies of games, which was pretty much your only option with 360 and PS3, if I remember right. Anyway, I don't think there's much of a digital marketplace, but um, or early days anyway. But anyway, people were going to game.co.uk, they were going to gamestation.co.uk, which we were not sponsored by. And, um, oh, this is paid advertising. Shut the fuck up. And um, yeah, they were ordering copies of games. Like, I know I did anyway. It was a case of, I want this game. Can you get it to me at this time? Like, you still have to do that with, uh, well, you don't have to, but I did that with, uh, Pokemon X and Y when that came out. Mm. Oh. I was like, I like, I want this game. And they're like, okay, when do you want it on release? Cool. We'll get you a day early and we'll take the money out of your account when we've actually got the game ready to, for delivery. So no money was going down. And I was still getting a pre order and the physical copy. I it think it's just like back then. Magic. Oh, my if, they, if it was back like a big game, like a Call of Duty game, you have to pre order it, otherwise you. You could go there and they'd be completely sold out. If you're talking about physical copies, lot, yes. Like a lot of times, like when I went to get FIFA, oh. if I didn't pre-order that thing, I would I would literally go every game shop in town, and I would not be able to find a copy because it, everyone would just go there on the midnight releases and buy them, and I wasn't sad enough to wait in a queue for two hours you to know, get a copy. One of my of favorite game. stories of that was um, back in the day when WWE was more popular with the games. Um, I remember it coming out and I couldn't find like a single copy of it anywhere in like any of the game stores. Went to Tesco, 20 quid. <laughs> Brand new game, 20 quid. I was like, yes! Played it for a bit, wasn't a big fan of it, sold it back to game as a pre-order, 25 quid. Profit, boys. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> profit. profit. <laughs> <laughs> it was you should have just so gone dumb. back. <laughs> I got tempted, but a friend of mine did that as well. I remember, uh, I won't say his name, but there was a guy in uh, college who, um, you'll know him, Dean, but he brought yeah. DJ... Did you hear her? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think he brought it for 25 quid from Tesco and sold it to game for, tw- uh, I think it was like 45, 50 quid. Wow. It was ridiculous. <laughs> just because it was on sale at Tesco. He was like, actually, I don't really want this. <laughs> and just went into game and sold it. Wow. It was ridiculous. Good way to make a couple of quid. I think he did it like twice before they stopped doing it. Like they realized mm. he was doing it and stopped them. I think they lowered the buy-in price as well. So he we ruined it for everybody else. But well, now literally you have to trade in a console and 100 games to get one of the brand new games. <laughs> tra- you trade in a console and a million games and you and maybe your life afford... and your first one. Yeah, maybe you can afford like a second-hand pre-order game. <laughs> if you're yeah. Lucky. <laughs> oh, pre- pre-played game by that. Anyway, but yeah, it's... It's ridiculous how things have changed like that, but yeah, as you were trying to highlight, it's a case of pre-ordering, especially digitally now, is ridiculous. Anyone who does it deserves to have their money taken from them. In fact, don't even do that. Just give your money straight to me. Yep. Um, I will charge you a small premium. And, of a million dollars. Uh, of a million dollars. Small loan of a million memes. And um, I will pre- I'll, buy, I'll pre-order Jeez. the game for you, hand deliver it to you. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Just give me your money instead. It's a much better use, a much better investment. Maybe you'll get some kind of return on it. Who knows? But yeah, you're all ridiculous for pre-ordering. That's yeah. all I wanted to say to you. The only game I pre-ordered on Steam is Grand Theft Auto 5, because... Go on. Rockstar. What's your, no, what's your justification there? Come on. Hey, no. Well, because it, I, I always wanted it on PC anyway. Oh. And, uh. Hey, no. See, I... Hey, no. See, hey, because they're Rockstar. Well, let's talk about um, a sub- subject that kind of ties into that, then. Um... Fucking what's that fucking platform we use, dude? CD keys. CD keys. They're great. Keys. But we um we were originally gonna get it on there, weren't we? Like Yeah. And then we realized it was like not Steam. It was uh, a thing you released. But Yeah, I actually purchased it and then uh, refunded because yeah. I didn't realise it was you had to play it from the Rockstar Social Club. But that's um that's a good example of what people are kind of going to now. Because mm. it's a case of you can. It's it, obviously it's just digital games mainly with that service. Well, it's not even mainly. It, it, it is, but yeah. people are going to that now because you can get games so much cheaper and yeah. questionably shady, depending on the service you use. Yeah, questionably. Um, GTA. GTA <clears throat> definitely is one of them. Fuck GTA. Uh, G- GTA. G two A. Um, but yeah, it's people are going to that because you can get digital games on there so much cheaper now and. 
It, you can't really blame anyone for doing it, really. Talking uh, of CD keys, though. Oh. Uh, I know we're go kind of backtracking a little bit. That's for fine. This point. Let's get back but to the topic. I'm done. When you're on about fine. um, you know, you're on about collector's editions earlier. Yeah. You're basically ah. paying for the CD key that comes in the collector's edition. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. Because yeah. it's not like anyone ever uses the discs, because that's just inconvenient and time-consuming, and why would you do that? See, we're talking about uh, going to this, then. When you have a bad internet. This goes back to the um, World of Warcraft thing I was going with. I got the collector's editions, which are obviously the physical stuff. You get the artwork, art book and shit with it. But if you, um, but now you can get the digital, digital deluxe edition, which is essentially collector's edition without the physical media. So, obviously, you don't get the CD thing, but you do get the key. Oh, you don't get a CD, physical CD, but you do get the key. And I think that's a model that a lot of people are shifting to. And again, it's something that people have the option to pre-order, but just shouldn't because it's all digital stuff, so you're not going to lose it. It's... I, I don't uh, understand people's logic with pre-ordering sometimes. No. Physical things, I it makes sense to me. I can understand why anybody would pre-order physical stuff. It's but... nice to have something you can physically touch, like books. I don't My know girls. why people... Yeah. Um... <laughs> Why, like, like the like the kind like the Kindle or whatever. Why are you reading a book on one of those? By the, it's so much better to physically have a book in your hands. Yeah, see, I I feel I'm with that with you on that because I know quite a few people who switch over to Kindles. We're going away from games now, apparently. Um, no, it's just using. This like, is no longer a game in channels. Uh, this is just a an Kindle example channel. of things. Uh, games on this? It's just like visit like to do with like it relates to the pre-order thing. Like if you were to get physical things from a pre-order rather than digital. I kind of follow you on this. No, yeah. I, I get you. It's, it's like, better to have like the physical a... thing rather than having digital because it's yeah. nicer to be able to hold what you've got and actually have a physical representation of it. Yeah. Of a physical representation of what you spent your money on than to not exactly. have that. Because let's be honest, if you look at your Steam library, there's probably a way someone could take that all away from you, and probably. there probably would be much of a way to get that all Game. back either. Game. So it's, yeah. It's, it, I don't know, it's an odd feeling. You feel better for having a physical copy. No, I'm totally with you on You that. feel more attached to a physical copy of something. Do you not get attached? And you do it something digital, because digital, you, you can't physically touch it, can you? Well, you can touch your computer that it's all stored on. It's like, well, that's not the same. Uh, uh, <laughs> stroking my screen right now. Well, that's the thing. We, we were talking about this when uh, I got my Wii U for a bit. We were talk I, I can't remember who I was actually talking to about it, but it was. I was making the point that I was looking at my... Um, my small collection of Wii U games, which is literally maybe four or five games. And then you look at my Steam library, which, uh, sorry, big nerds who have bigger collections than me. I'm sorry your penis isn't, you know, adequate for women. But you compare that 140 game list to five games that are physically there. And it's like, that looks so much more impressive, just having those games physically there than this big yeah. list of games that I can play. It's just, I don't know. It's my personal feeling. I imagine a lot of people don't really give a shit. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. It does feel you feel it's more. It's more like an achievement, I guess. More achievement to actually have that stuff rather than yeah, yeah I get you physically on that. have the stuff because you look at so like when I got my games, like I feel nothing for any of the games I play. Really, that's okay, Dean. You're not just supposed to feel anything for them. No, not in that way. You know what I mean? Like I'd be pissed off if someone broke my uh, a physical copy of a oh. thing, but like if someone fucking hacked my steam and took my games away from me i wouldn't care i'll just pay for another one okay uh this is a challenge to anyone in the community who's listening to this uh, <laughs> Dean wants his steam say, library uh... Hacked. uh if you get it you get all of his games and he will just go ahead and buy more because he's rich i'm not that rich, <laughs> you're, rich, that enough rich. To wait. You're, you're rich enough to uh throw money at uh kickstarter Okay, wow. right, let's get on to that in a second. I need to make a joke. Yeah. Uh, he, started, he, st he started his gaming career with a small loan of a million games, and uh, <laughs> he's starting his gaming empire now. But no, uh, let's get to Kickstarter then, because uh, Dean's very good with Kickstarter. Uh, really? I talked about last time, um, I've actually got two games backed on Kickstarter, which is the uh, Friday the 13th game, which is coming out, which could be quite fun. I think, it's, um, I think they're setting it up as a seven versus one, like hunted kind of game. Which is going to uh, be uh, Jason. quite interesting. Yeah, Jason, Friday the 13th. This, you got just nice play that on GTA. It's, it took me like a few seconds. I on. mean, yeah, technically you can, but it's not... Five, it's, I need to say Five Nights at Freddy's. It's not Freddy... Mm, the Come on, Freddy. Freddy. It's, it's, not not Freddy. it's not Jason. It's not Jason. It's not Jason. So, <laughs> it you know, it's not the same to me. Like, you, know, you know, you need that, yeah. uh, you need that iconic... Uh, ch -ch 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 
<laughs> you yeah. need that. But um, yeah, and they've also got ukulele, which is going to be fucking amazing because they're not allowed to make a bad version of that. Um, <laughs> but I haven't put that much money into those. I've put enough. Basically, I've put enough, I think, to get early access with both of them. Yeah. So I'm literally talking about the problem we're complaining about. Um, <laughs> No, it's like no. I think it's the way people are pro- the community approaches early access. Early access is a platform for you to uh, help fund the game, isn't it? Yeah. You get early access to the game, but like you're helping the development of a game. A lot of people jump into and like, oh, I want this, I want that. It's like you 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 chose to help the development of the game, and like you complain about all these fucking bugs and shit. Like over and over and over again. Yes, granted, really, granted really that's what early access access is for for ironing out bugs and stuff, and then testing out features. But I, I don't think people approach it correctly. Yeah, that's always been a thing that I've been bothered about. That early access games are a thing, and then people, for some reason, feel the need to complain about them. It's like, yeah. oh, I got this game on pre-order, and uh, there's these many bugs, and it, it's not ready yet. It's like, uh, yeah, it's literally in the fucking description of the game on Steam. This is an alpha release. You will encounter bugs. And good games, or DayZ, actually have that warning within the yeah. game, baked into the goddamn game, and people still have the nerve to complain about well, it. This game's broken. I want refund. It's yeah. Like, it's... You, and, mm, it's just like, <laughs> do you want to get shot? <laughs> I mean, it's... Well, I mean, if you're playing DayZ, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For beans. It's important to, like, report these bugs so they can fix it. But... No, no, no. We're talking yeah, about shooting yeah, but, like, some people just bugs. Like, Fair enough, that needs to happen. These guys essentially are paid to be alpha testers or yeah, beta testers or beta males. But H1Z1 that's still it's just the fact that You hate that game. The fact that some people just pop up and like, oh, game's broken, I want to refund it, shit. I want to refund it. It's like, do you not understand what early access is? Don't buy the fucking game if, you, if you're if you going to go in there and just say, oh, your game's broken, I'm not playing. Yeah, well, that's... I, I want a refund. It's like, read up on the game before you... Decide to support it in early access. Yeah, well, we can. A lot of people don't. They just go, oh yeah, bang. We've we got game. a good example of that because you and I used to play uh, Rust quite a lot. We yeah. Put f- we what 120 odd hours into that. Oh, uh, and you that put was... more hours. Than... I put. I think I put more in. Yeah. But yeah, when the game got uh, revamped, I played it a little bit and wasn't a bit that big a fan. And because I think I had uh, there's some optimization issues. Do you know what I did? I did like what you know that famous meme Bill would do and uh, just not complain. It's not like. Complain. Wait, yeah, this is let's a, see how it goes. Yeah, the game's obviously not ready for being played properly yet, so I'm just going to give it a few months, go back to it, and start playing it again then. It looks too fair now. It looks really good. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's now. It's, I've, I don't understand people's logic and what they think they're going to gain from just complaining about a game. It's like, if you've got a problem with the game, especially early access is what we're referring to here, just don't play it for a bit. Just leave it alone. Yeah. It will get fixed. Leave you alone. just going onto forums and going, the game's broken and shitty. Because yeah. I brought it in early access and I expect a full fucking game. It, yeah, exactly. You're just an idiot. Just you. There's no reasoning. Don't me. buy early access games if you're going to behave like a twat. Yeah. But talking about early access games. Um, see, this is the thing. Early access games are a risk. It's a lottery. Yeah. It always will be. And I think Dean is probably like <laughs> virtually an expert at that at this stage. Really? <laughs> um well, we can quite easily talk about um, Stomping Land um, versus uh, the Isle. The Isle, yeah. Because you 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 play in those, you've played both of those games, and yeah. you know what happened with uh, Stomping Land. Yeah. Um, do you want to go into it a little bit? Because I well, but, end up well, rambling and not knowing what I'm talking about. Anyone anyone who played it really knows what happened. The lead developer basically made. Something like a million dollars or something. Not Didn't bad. pay any of his uh, artists or any of the modelers or anyone else working on the team and basically just disappeared off the face of the earth oh, with all nice. the money. And I don't know, the Isle suffered a bit. It stuff still suffers from people saying, oh, is this Stomping Land 2.0 just because it's got the same dinosaurs? Well, those models and whatever were not purchased by the developer for the Stompy Land, so they were pretty much just sitting there waiting for someone to say, yeah, here's some money, we'll have them. We'll yeah. use them or whatever. The issue with um, Stompy of- Lands was the, the developer literally just abandoned it. Yeah, literally so, just abandoned it. This is That's what I meant what, by being a risk. It's a case of you have to 
realise that just because something's in early access and someone claims to be finishing it yeah. doesn't mean it's actually ever going to get finished. Yeah, exactly. So, well, the aisle, the aisles. Hey, John's Ed once. <laughs> You've got a vendetta against that dude. And when the aisle first oh. came out, the, the amount of people that were saying, "Oh, this is Jig, this this guy's Jig or whatever," which was the name of the developer, which fucking abandoned the stomping land. Right. And it's just people just presume things. Granted, they're gonna have that having like the same models of like the dinosaurs or whatever from the stomping land, but people are just stupid. <laughs> people are just stupid if anyone if anyone is stupid enough to think that someone would try and do that again then well I don't know let's be honest to somebody's probably going to try it again but people are yeah, actually going to be wise to it this time people are going to be ready for that kind of bullshit when you, when, you, when you think about the amount of money the aisles probably already well the amount of sales it's got I think on Steam Spire it's something like 14, 15,000 or something Fourteen to fifteen thousand. I don't know how accurate those figures are. You can't really say. But when you multiply that by the amount of games cost, they've got enough to finish the game. Because originally for kick, well, for Kickstarter they wanted fifty thousand to uh, get the game to a state that it's not going to be in for a while. Mm -hmm. They would have been able to put so much into it over three months and then release on early access, but. As the Kickstarter didn't work, they still carried on working on the game, but put pumping all their own money into it, yeah. and obviously a helpful helpful donations from other people. <laughs> you, yeah. Um, <laughs> Dean got called a uh, was it a god? Yeah. By the developer. Yeah. By, I don't by think they have a very good understanding of what a god is. To be honest. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I am a god, mate. Well, go on to him. No, it's but it's yeah, interesting yeah, it's because buddy. what I do like about Dean. There's a couple of things, but this is literally the main thing that I'm ever going to talk about liking about. Literally, just that, that's it. You only literally like a couple thing. of things. Is um, he's very passionate about like video games and especially ones with dinosaurs. Yeah, for fucking love dinosaurs. He's not a <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> and um. <laughs> Alright, guys. Sorry, back to hey, I mean, being, being fucking obsessed with ponies and shit. Isn't it? It's very true. Very true. Okay, let's save the fandom talk for the better? next episode. <laughs> um, Is it really any better? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I, I do enjoy how passionate some people are about games. Like, I quite quickly backed ukulele because I saw elements of, uh, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, which, all on, in all honesty, I didn't play that much. I never had Nintendo growing up, but I do enjoy, like, the old-school action-slash-puzzle platformers. So Bank, that's a game... And and stuff. Yeah, that's a game oh. I want to back, and Spyro and stuff like that. I fuck it, mm. and uh, the one I most compare it to is, uh, is it Gobbo? Not Gobbo. Gobbo? Uh, uh, Legend Quark. of the Gobbos. Croc. 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 Yes. Croc was so uh, Croc. I played. Okay. And Spyro was awesome. Well, Spyro was awesome. But yeah, I like those kind of games, so I'm kind of, you know, quite happy to chuck money in for that kind of game. I mm. have faith in those developers and stuff. And Dean's very much the same with dinosaur games. Like, is this what, the third? Kickstarter you've put money into no, for games? No, only the first one. Oh, I mean, not Kickstarter, sorry. Um, like, early access and stuff. Yeah. Got, there was Stomping Lands, Primal Carnage. Um, ugh. Ugh. Primal, yeah. And that was a whole thing. That's another uh, one we could talk about. Well, well Stomping Land, Primal Carnage. Yeah, Stomping Land. And I don't know why I bought Ark. Yeah, mm. Ark's a very interesting one, which we haven't touched yet. Well, that game, I just... <sighs> with the whole <laughs> early access thing... My opinion of that game is, if they'd have optimised it, they could have released that as a full game from day one. Yeah. Because it's unfair them putting... Because it had millions pumped into it. You can tell that game had millions pumped into it. It's unfair on other early access games that that is now the benchmark. Simply because it ain't really an indie game, is it, when you think about it? With the amount of fucking money that's been pumped into it. How, well, how much money's been pumped into it from what sources? Well, they've made... 20 odd million well they've uh, investors and stuff they i suppose think there was money from sony and stuff because they're releasing on the playstation and the xbox as well so they yeah well that doesn't mean they've stop. got money from them necessarily it just means well, they're releasing on that but they would support from them i get what you're getting at it's like the whole uh shenmue thing like we talked about last time mm. they've obviously got the kickstarter to for some reason to show yeah. interest in the game yeah, they only needed three million to make the game. Yeah, because in reality they've got twenty million at least coming in from Sony and yeah. various things like that. So I know that's interesting. Well, the the, um, the the publishing company that 
made Primal Carnage. Well, that published Primal Carnage. Yeah. Are the ones who published the who published Ark. Uh huh. And uh, basically, they have investors with a lot of money. So. So Ark's in a similar similar kind of situation, really. Yeah. Well, they 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 had like a team of forty people working constantly on it, whereas game a lot of early access games have fewer than ten people working on mm. the game. Hello, you know you're on about uh, platforming puzzle type games. Yes. I know a great game that you would probably love in that genre. If you call, say Brilliant Bob, I'll stab you. <laughs> My <laughs> game <laughs> is fucking me bowler. Game of the year, boy. God, I'm not putting another link to like, I'm not publicising that fucking game again. Anyway. <laughs> asshole. Free. <laughs> um, where are we going with this particular story? I already forgot. Yeah. Sometimes I tend to like go into something and my mind just. You throw me so fucking much when you talk. Yeah, sometimes I don't even know where the destination is for the end of my. Is it destination unknown? The way is the destination. By a tom tom. I just talk and just. There's no actual goal. The way is the weird destination. We're talking about Kickstarter. Talking about backing certain games. Yeah. Uh, Talking about how they got certain money. Talking about Ark, basically. That was the thing we were talking about. But yeah, Yeah. you uh, you and Percy both played that? Mm. Yeah. So, what's your what's your opinion of it, Dan? Mm, it's one of those that if I really really needed something to play for an hour, maybe I could get into it. But for the most part, I just can't be bothered to put the time that it it's, needs into it. Yeah, it's grind fest, really. Mm. I want to compare you. Very much. So. It's it's literally basic. All it is basically oh, it is yeah. rust, and they just slap down the floor. Onto it. That is how it plays. It's exactly that. The X Files. I just like. Do yeah, they say it's a dinosaur game, but it's a, survi- it's a typical survival. It's a typical survival game with dinosaurs or the afterthought sort of thing. I just think. don't piss off I, the Brontos, otherwise you'll have a bad yeah. time. <laughs> you guys can't talk. Or Alexia the Parasaur. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they hit you, you go flying, don't you? Mm. Yeah, um, this kind of brings us to um, a point I was going to make last last week, which was uh, with early access games. How many of them need to be survival games? All of them. <laughs> it's uh, the most popular genre at the moment, isn't it? I mean... Um, probably I think open world is like a massive thing because there's a lot of freedom. You've got more freedom in a game. I hate open fucking world. freedom games. They're contractually I love. obligated that so if it's an early them, access game, it's a survival game. Some of them <laughs> are much. great. I mean, talking about survival games... Uh, open sandbox games i like ones that have like a decent amount of customization and stuff but i don't know i like games that have a goal i like knowing like see this is the thing with minecraft and yet you say you don't like fifa shrug it (laughs) that doesn't make any sense (laughs) fuck off you gotta you gotta be put as many goals past the other team as possible that's not i hate you in fact there's two goals on there it's fucking brilliant I'm, well, gonna, I'm gonna stop. Technically, there's more than two goals depends how many you score as well you know (laughs) kicking the ball into that counts as a goal God damn. <laughs> anyway, talking about Minecraft for some reason, that's the thing with Minecraft. When I first started playing that, I was like, "Is there any end goal to this game?" Because obviously it's a big open world, survivability, whatever. But you actually do technically have end goals, and I kind of like like working towards them, even if it's like indirect. Like the videos we're going to be uh, that are going to be coming out soon with us for the survival island. It's a case of the point of those maps is to get to the end as quick as possible and beat the end yeah. dragon. I like knowing that there's an end. To, to like an end goal kind of thing. There's an end to dragon. Yeah, I think there's an end what to dragon. a lot of survival games would do is if there was like some kind of yeah, you've got the freedom of like yeah, basically you're thrown out with nothing and you have to survive. But there should be like little little details of like so you can kind of guess the story of what happened and then I don't know. Say like with DayZ, you should be able to find your way to patient like where they held patient zero or whatever. That's why I think like um. Especially with, uh, like, Frankie on PC and 1080p's yeah. original series. It was very much role-play driven. Yeah, that's he made why, it. That's why he it's made so it, he played it like it wasn't, but it was so well made, that series. Yeah. I could re-watch that. Yeah, yeah it is anytime. a very series. It's because it made it more insane because he was putting a story behind it. Like building and he was off. good at the game as well. Like, yeah, exactly. it's not like you were watching some clueless pleb run around doing stuff. Oh, well, like, I know he YouTubers. was great at yeah, what he was much. doing. And he made it fucking brilliant to watch. Yeah, exactly. 
A lot of people don't like Frankie. I'll never really understand why, but there are things. Yeah, people are welcome to their own opinions, like apparently. Yeah. I, I do well, approve of it, but... Well, like I said with DayZ, um, the fun. Isle, the Isle is eventually going to have a, like a, a story sort of thing, that, which you can kind of discover as you go around, but it's not like, it doesn't point you towards places, it's like little bits of data that you can pick up, like while you're exploring or whatever. But that's the thing with a lot of these survival games, which, again, is what the kind of subject was. Um, you're looking at games that you literally run around, you do stuff, and then... This is the thing with survival games now. They have a very, like, um, herd mentality when it comes to them. Because, mm. like, obviously, when DayZ com- came out, everyone was on DayZ. That's all great. That's all grand. Then the next survival game came out, and people left DayZ to that game. It's like, yeah. oh, this is more of the same. I'm bored of this, but I don't want to go back to DayZ. So the next survival game comes out, and it's the same thing. It's all those people just wander over. It's... I tell you what, it's the same mentality as uh, MMOs. Yeah. People who didn't settle for one MMO like I did with World of Warcraft ended up going between so many different MMOs that it just seemed kind of pointless mm, to do. Yeah. And survival See, games are very much the same. Now you mention hopping between MMOs. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I think WoW was sort of my original MMO that I actually sat down. I was like, I'm into this. I could... Yep. S- and stuck a lot of time into What's and I've, I've dabbled in a lot of other MMOs you know I've played like I've played a bit of Rift and, yep, same. I f- and just none of them have the same feel that I like about WoW no, exactly. and I don't know what it is but no, it's, I feel it's like really I would, odd, isn't it? yeah it's, it's strange that such different games which is why you should be enjoying games because they're not the same as other games you dislike because they don't feel like another yeah. game you want it which, to be like a game that you've been playing for years yeah i mean for the most part when i play an mmo what i look for is i just i don't know part of me just wants to find something that's druid like in a class where you can you know you can do basically whatever role you want in one class yeah and just i don't know something about not being able to find that uh kind of bores me so i always end up going back to the typical hunter or the hunter of that game. Yeah, basically it, like the and ranged. And even then, it still DJ. doesn't feel as fun as just playing a hunter on WoW would be. Playing the same character that I've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into. Ah, so now you're talking about the... Um, oh, come on, what's the phrase for this? Um, Time-consuming bullshit. That you don't want to change... Have, have to change. Time cost fallacy. That's the one. Um... Okay. That's not what I was on about. <laughs> Basically, um, it's very much the same with why I won't ever properly quit World of Warcraft. Because you're not made... Oh, I'm like a... you've put so much time into it, it feels like a waste yeah. to stop. So it's a case yeah. of you don't swap over to other MMOs or other games because this is why oh. I've, I've never played... Right, play, World of Warcraft was my main game for maybe eight, nine years. And it was literally a case of I've put all these this effort into these achievements, all this effort into this gear all this time into doing various things. If I go to anything else, it no. seems like completely pointless that I've done any of this. Yeah. And you don't get that with um, survival games, which is why they're so easy to switch around. And I think anyone yeah. who doesn't get attached to an MMO, who doesn't give themselves time to, has yeah. the exact same thing. And it's a very weird situation to be in because really, the sun- why it's called the sunk time fallacy, fallacy obviously being false, is you've put those nine years in and to switch to something else isn't technically a loss because you've enjoyed you've that, that time years, yeah, yeah, for those nine yeah. years. And that's kind of like what you're getting at there. But I mean, it's for me, it's not so much that it's because I've put all that time in that I don't want to stop playing it. It's just I love... I. It's the fact that I've played it for so long and I'm so used to the feel of the class. Yeah. Nothing else seems to compare to why I enjoy the Hunter class. If that makes sense, more sense. I suppose yeah. it's like your first love, then, isn't it? Really? I guess so. I mean, I have been playing Hunter for like, like the best part know. of four or five years, almost exclusively now. Yeah. Uh, bar nowadays, where I sort of branched into like Monk a little bit, but. Well, that's very much like the. Um, that's what people don't get, like the sunk cost fallacy. They don't get that with survival games. So yeah. This sure. is why I kind of would want to avoid Ark. Because you do have a persistent like level and stuff, don't you? And like things that do stay. And yeah. it's why I got so involved in Rust as well. 
because granted you don't keep your gear when you die and stuff which is like the general thing with these survival games mm. but you do have your persistent home that you've built like me and unless Dean, it gets raided yeah yeah me and dean would spend like hours just guarding our house and stuff go into work in the morning get him back and be like oh, i hope the house is still there yeah. <laughs> it's like a wall's that's one, gone that's one of the no, things i don't looting. like about rust yeah that's kind of why i quit playing it it was it just got too samey and boring and i think every other survival game would be like that for me as well you literally have to put more time into making sure no one steals your shit than you do getting the shit that you yeah, don't want exactly. people to steal and it's just not it's just in very pointless the time. At, that at that stage but yeah, that's the kind of things you have to deal with, and it's such a pain in the ass. And it's like, you know, sooner or later it's going to happen. Yeah. So you're just waiting to prepare for the same monotonous grind that you've yeah, already done four times because some cunt wants to ruin your fun. You start from the bottom and you back at the bottom. Arc, because you literally, you walk two feet and you get you get in your shit pushed in by some fucking prehistoric ant or something. <laughs> Like last time we played Dan, how many ants were there? Like, you walk Oh, those fucking rock. wasp things. You're wasps and ants and shit. Yeah, like, no, literally, they you pitch. can't walk five feet without something wanting to rip your ass all out. To be fair, I don't <laughs> mind that. I don't mind that, because at least what, you know what you need to be prepared At least you yeah, know but, like, you what you need to be loads of time prepared for. Done over. Yeah, but you abs but you should already know at that point what you what you need to prepare for. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's a learning curve, isn't it? Exactly. And it's like we haven't even, it's not like we've put enough time in to say that we've gone all like True. really far north as well and found all like the fucking saber tooths and all that shit that's going to fuck your day up. But our problem is, is I just don't think we're patient enough or we don't want, not that we don't want to sit time. time. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, it's you one do have to games. sink time into these games to actually. It requires a lot more time than I could care to give it. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Probably when the when loads of the stuff's added to the island, you've got the progression system, and I'll probably won't have enough time to progress very far in it. But oh well. I think it's the whole sunk cost time fallacy yeah. thing. It's a case of do you want to put the time in to actually be any good at the game? Because that's the thing: you either put time into the game and get good at it, and then Leon, you know, like step back and wonder what the fuck you're doing with your life. Or you understand who you're talking to, though, don't you? I'm talking to free yeah, fucking Yeah, we don't nerds. need to play the game very well. We're just fucking good naturally. Well, you know, <laughs> some games, maybe. But, um, yeah, it's a very weird situation. Anyway, uh, guys, that's, I believe, is our uh, hour oh, discussion our hour. up already. Oh. It is. We've gone over an hour. Holy shit. So, um, thanks for watching, as always, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I'd like to thank Murdo and Dean and Dan for joining us, especially You're Dan, welcome. who joined us from bed quite recently. Shh! Shut um, up. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Slept for the start of Tiddy Cast again. Um, but yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the uh, podcast so far. Uh, if you're not, well, we're going to make more anyway because I quite like having these discussions. As mm. usual, if you want to check out our Let's Play content, all of it is available on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Insanity Game UK. Um, Murdo has also got a YouTube channel if you want to plug that, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start to make some videos again soon, I guess. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> that, that, we'll links in the description below. I, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do, but I want to do videos. So that's gonna happen. Eventually, we're gonna get professional and actually have like proper links and stuff for uh, our various solo channels and stuff. But yeah, uh, we'll provide links in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back next week talking about uh, furries, and we'll uh, see you in the next one. Flopper. See you guys. See ya. Goodbye. So, uh, yeah, because um, I'm a great person, I took on the team, and uh, I went out and purchased Five Nights at Freddy's World, or FNAF World, uh, Dean was calling it Ebola.